Cool. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, and I'm happy to be here today. My name is Jennifer Lopez Garza, and I'm with the City of San Antonio's Health Department. And today I'm going to be um, discussing uh, raising resilient children. And this is through uh, one of the Triple P selected seminars. And so really excited to be here today. I'm looking forward to, to everything. I hope everybody uh, is having a great morning. And so let's just jump on into it so we can have some extra time at the end for questions. Perfect. Let me present. Awesome. Okay. So, again, uh, for those of you that are just joining, my name is Jennifer Grace Lopez Garza, and I'm going to be presenting a triple P for a triple P seminar over raising resilient children. I hope y'all find uh, the session inf informative and helpful. Um, and we're going to be um, talking about a raising emotion. Um, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> about emotional resilience in children, including uh, what it means, why it's important, and how it benefits children. We're going to discuss uh, six important building blocks or life skills um, that help children manage their emotions. And we're also going to look and talk about how parents can promote the skills. Um, and after. Um, We'll, we're going to conclude with some key take home um, messages. So again, it's going to be a 45 minute uh, presentation and uh, due to the time limit, I'm going to probably leave about five minutes at the end for questions. So I'm going to do my best to um, to go through this so we can have that time. Um, but we're also going to be following up with any other further questions um, through email. We're going to try to uh, do our best to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. So emotional resilience. One of the most important tasks um, in parenthood is helping children learn to deal with their emotions. Emotional resilience refers to children's ability to manage their feelings. Um, and this means being able to recognize, understand, and accept their feelings, um, express feelings appropriately uh, in ways that don't harm others, face and resolve difficult or unpleasant situations, and cope with stressful or upsetting events. Children's ability to recognize, understand, and deal with different emotions develops gradually and is related to, to their language and cognitive development. So the importance of resilience. Children must learn to cope with everyday feelings, both positive and negative, such as excitement, anticipation, frustration, and disappointment. All children experience stressful events in their lives such as preparing for exams or like not winning a game or a race um, or managing relationships with their peers and friends. A lot of children have uh, some upsetting things happen to them, like their parents' separation um, or divorce or even a death in the family or the loss of a, pe of a pet. So it's really important for children to learn how to cope with these experiences. Their ability to cope with feelings is important to their long-term happiness emotional well-being, and overall success in life. Emotional resilience is important for the development of social skills and relationships with others, tolerance and compassion, the ability, ability to cope with life experiences, stressors, and the prevention of emotional problems. So some of the benefits for children um, would be that emotionally resilient children are most li are more likely to be caring and uh, socially skilled, empathetic and sensitive uh, to the needs of others, able to manage their feelings and move through negative feelings um, to feel better again, and able to cope with stress, like exams or those unpleasant experiences like going to the dentist. Um, they are less likely to resort to unhelpful ways of, of coping, such as avoiding or denying problems or relying on others to fix um, to fix everything or um, to give them lots of sympathy. So it's inevitable that children will experience periods of stress in their lives. Therefore, children need the emotional skills to deal with stress. Emotional resilience involves the six key skills or building blocks. And they are recognizing, understanding, and accepting feelings, expressing feelings appropriately and ways that don't harm others, building a positive outlook, developing effective ways of coping, 
dealing with negative feelings and unpleasant situations and managing particularly stressful life events. Um, these are all skills that, be, that can be encouraged as children develop. So now let's get into the first building block. Um, the first is uh, for children to recognize and accept feelings both in themselves and in others. From the earliest stages of development, children experience different emotional states, such as contentment, pleasure, discomfort, and distress. As children move through their preschool and primary school years, they become better able to recognize, talk about, and understand how they feel and how others might feel. This involves being aware of what they of what they are feeling, such as anxiety or worry, and having the words to describe it, such as afraid. Their feelings may also become more complex. This developmental progression is related to children's language, thinking, and experiences. So for example, one might compare toddler frustration and tantrums to teenage social anxiety. So some ideas of how, um, how to help children learn to recognize, understand, and accept uh, feelings are, accept that it's normal and healthy to have ups and downs, and let your child know that it's okay to have different feelings and show them. Talk about feelings in a way your child understands. From time to time in everyday conversations, talk to your child about emotions and how to recognize them, both in themselves and in other people. Talk about the reason for these feelings. Be emotionally expressive yourself. Children learn a lot about emotions by watching their parents' faces and gestures. These provide clues about how someone is feeling. Talk about your own feelings. Share stories of times you felt different emotions, happy, excited, sad, angry, worried, or annoyed. Explain the reasons you felt this way and talk about how you dealt with your feelings. Help your child recognize and label emotions. When your child shows an emotion, ask how they feel. If they can't tell you, try to describe the emotion for them. So you can say something like, it sounds like you're getting frustrated with that puzzle. You can encourage children to be emotionally expressive um, and to express themselves with books, stories, fantasy play, art, drama, music. Uh, children can become more aware of their emotion when expressiveness is valued. So now on to building block number two. There is more um, than emo emotional resilience and simply being able to recognize and accept feelings. The next building block is expressing feelings appropriately and ways that don't harm in ways that don't harm others. Parents have an important role in helping children learn acceptable ways of expressing their feelings. So according to Triple P, a children need to learn the following: what types of emotional expressions are okay? like what words, expressions, and actions are appropriate, and when to express their feelings, like who they should talk to and how often and how much. They need to learn what types of emotion expressions are not okay, such as being affectionate to people they don't know well, <clears throat> for example, hugging strangers, and socially inappropriate ways of expressing feelings, like losing control and yelling, or hurtful actions, for example, hitting or abusing others. Acceptable ways of expressing emotions are related to cultural and family expectations. It's important for children to learn about culture through rituals and traditions. So like weddings, funerals, and festivals can teach children how their family and culture deal and with celebration and loss. And there are a number of traps parents can fall into that can accidentally encourage emotional distress in, in children, such as spending too much time talking about their own feelings and troubles, dwelling on upsetting experiences, maybe showing too much interest in how a child feels, accidentally rewarding them for being upset um, by being overly sympathetic or encouraging avoidance, overreacting to minor upsets such as small bumps or grazes, and even sometimes thinking that we're not giving enough attention So let's, ah, let's look at some tips for encouraging children to express their feelings appropriately. There are a number of ways parents can help children feel comfortable with talking about their feelings. Ask your children how they'll feel about things that happen to them. 
when your child starts to tell you about their experiences or how they're feeling, stop what you're doing and try to listen carefully. Summarize what they're telling you, for example, like you were really disappointed with your marks on that exam, weren't you? And try not to tell them how they should feel, like saying things like there's nothing to worry about or that they shouldn't feel the way that they do. For example, oh, don't be silly. It doesn't matter if they call you names. Don't get so upset about it. Instead, try to acknowledge their feelings. For example, I can see how that would make you feel upset. Read children's books about both happy and upsetting events and talk about how the characters feel. Help your child recognize feelings in themselves and others and ask how they might think another person feels. Give your child a positive, give your child positive attention. So uh, for expressing their feelings in appropriate ways. So it's important for both positive and negative emotions. For example, if your child is being generous, uh, kind, friendly, or cheerful, tell them that you're pleased with them. So for example, it's great to see you laughing together. Whose joke was that? But if your child is uh, successfully dealing with difficult situations, like being teased, um, and without getting upset, congratulate them on how they're handling that situation and for being able to work through those emotions. Because as parents, uh, we need to decide how to deal with children when upset feelings turn into anger or hurtful behavior. Using consistent discipline in your child, if your child expresses upset feelings and rude, hurtful, or disrespectful ways. So you could say things like, um, for example, acknowledge the upset feeling before dealing with the problem behavior. Tell your child um, what to stop doing. Briefly say why and tell your child what to do instead. So a scenario would be, um, I can see you were very disappointed about not being able to go to the skate park today. So please stop kicking your skateboard because you might break it. I'd like for you to put your bag down and take a deep breath. Depending on the situation, a logical consequence, such as a, time, a quiet time or a timeout, might be suitable backup if the problem behavior continues. Model uh, better ways of expressing upset feelings. When you're annoyed or upset about something, avoid yelling. Show your child how to stay calm and deal with situations assertively. On to building block three. Um, this uh, building block is for emotional resilience is developing a positive outlook. Children's feelings are related to what they think about and tell themselves and the experiences they have. Parents can help children develop positive ways of thinking about themselves in the world. Having a positive outlook involves optimistic thinking to develop goals, use initiative, look for the positive ex uh, experience, and develop confidence and a sense of control. Curiosity and exploration to take an interest in the world and find things to do rather than being bored or negative. And a sense of contentment, which can involve appreciation, empathy for others, acceptance of things that can't be changed, and the ability to enjoy peaceful times doing very little. Oh. Curiosity is great to help children's uh, learning. To encourage your children's curiosity, let them decide on activities they'd like to do. Let your child explore. Show interest and excitement about things you discovered together. Talk about things like colors, hearing sounds, taste, smell, and touch to promote your child's awareness and appreciation of their environment. Be available when your child wants to show you something. Try to stop what you're doing um, so you can pique their interest and talk to them about uh, whatever it is that, that they're interested in. Ask questions and make comments about the activities that your child um, are doing, like the different creations or, or whatever it is um, that, that uh, has them excited. The main thing is just showing them that you care. Teach your child how to find information such as using maps, books, libraries, and computers, because those are really good life skills to have. Encouraging contentment. This involves helping children to be accepting, tolerant, and appreciative of what they have. So some suggestions for this would be um, to model 
being appreciative and grateful. So saying thank you when someone does something for you or commenting on things of beauty. Ask your child to talk about the highlight of their day. Create and talk about shared family experiences and happy childhood memories. Encourage empathy by discussing um, other people's points of view. Discuss acceptance of things they can't, that can't be changed. Acknowledge feelings of envy or dissatisfaction. Then gently encourage children to accept um, what they don't have control of, control of and um, not to dwell on the things that they can't change. Encourage involvement in meetings for activities like sports, volunteering, or clubs to help your children experience achievement and belonging. Encourage them to slow down sometimes and just take time to be still, to take in the world around them and doing activities like stargazing or uh, looking at fish in a pond. So now to building block four. Coping skills are the skills children can learn to help them deal with negative emotions. These include problem solving, positive self, uh, self-talk, um, encountering unhelpful thoughts, relaxation, both mental and physical, and the ability to ask for help when it's needed and to look for support. So how can we assist our children in developing problem solving skills? Here are some key points. Children learn a lot about problem solving through watching. So setting a good example again and letting your child see how you deal with problems is a great first start. Talk about how you can break a problem down into smaller parts that can be worked out one at a time. Play games with your child that promotes thinking and problem solving. And rather than um, solving all the problems, encourage your child to find the answers and to work at solving their own problems. Congratulate your child when they when they do solve a problem on their own and involve them in problem in family problem solving discussions like tackling and inv invasions in the yard or um, maybe uh, helping mom or dad with some leaky faucets in the house and coming uh, up with ideas on how they're going to fix it. So here are some other steps um, that can help children and as they're problem solving. And so you can, um, the first would be to state the problem clearly. Then uh, you want to come up with some possible solutions. Think about the good points and the bad points of each, of each solution. Choose the best solution or a combination of ideas. Try out the solution by putting the plan into action. Review and see how it works and make the necessary changes from there. Another coping skill is, po of, um, is positive thinking and self-talk. So here's some pointers to help your child develop these skills. Ask your child to evaluate their own achievements and what they did well and what they would like to do differently next time. Explain how thinking about the same thing in different ways affects how you feel. Prompt your child ima to imagine how uh, someone else might be thinking or feeling. Maybe even point out some helpful and unhelpful ways of thinking about a situation and encourage your child to practice helpful ways of thinking. For example, I can do this. Model using positive self-talk to cope with your own stress or negative feelings. To help your children learn to relax, provide a good model of how to manage stress by looking after yourself and taking time to relax. And then maybe even help your child find ways to relax that works for them. So like taking some nice, sleep, uh, slow, deep breaths, relaxing their muscles, um, listening or uh, to relaxing or calming music. I know my son particularly enjoys listening uh, to beach music at night. He really likes the waves. All right, so discuss with your child or, um, that everyone needs to talk about their feelings, especially when they feel bad. Talk about how to get support from others when you feel bad. If your child doesn't want to talk to you about their feelings, help them find someone to talk to, like a close family member you trust or a good friend that you trust or a school teacher or a counselor. Just let them know that it's okay. So now we're going to go on to the uh, fifth building block, which is dealing with negative feelings. So a lot of children, um, experience negative emotions. They're a part of everyday experiences. 
However, they don't need to be extreme. Children can learn to manage their feelings. Negative emotions that might include anger, anxiety, disappointment, guilt, loneliness, rejection, sadness. It's not impossible. It's not possible to completely protect children from these feelings. Many emotions are short-lived and pass quickly without parents needing to do anything. When children are in distress, parents can calmly assist and prompt problem solving. Parents can also work on helping children learn to resolve negative feelings without needing adults um, to intervene. So let's, do, let's go through some um, steps that parents can follow to help their children um, when they're in distress or upset. So we can recognize when, they're, when your child is upset maybe uh, stop what you're doing so you can pay attention ask your child what's wrong and encourage them to tell you what happened listen to what they have to say ask a question or two to clarify the problem summarize what you've heard to check your understanding and if you have it right but whatever you do don't put words in their mouth acknowledge their feelings name the feeling or emotion and let your child know it's okay to feel upset maybe even share a recent example of your own if it's appropriate Ask your child how they would like to deal with the situation and if they needed any help from you. When appropriate, you know, um, prompt your child to problem solve for themselves. If the upset situation continues, suggest a, a cooling off period and distract your child with another fun activity that they enjoy. Stay calm and avoid getting angry or upset yourself. Make a time later to talk about the incident when your child has settled down. So parents can also help children learn to deal with negative emotions on their own. For example, to help a child learn to deal with anxiety, um, you can set a good example by staying calm and modeling how to face and cope with worries. Talk with your child about their anxious feelings. Teach your child strategies like positive self-talk, relaxation, distraction. Um, stay calm when your child is anxious and prompt them to use their coping strategies. Praise them for their effort and achievements and facing their fears. And for safety, talk to your child about dangerous or emergency situations and what to do. So this is the final building block, and this is coping with stressful life events. There are many different types of stressful events that children might experience, including a chain such as moving a house or changing schools, um, maybe getting uh, poor marks in school, or even uh, more severe ones like a loss, um, a loss in the death of a family member uh, due to COVID, especially right now, um, or parents going through a separation or divorce, or even just uh, traumatic situations. Um, think about how children might perceive and ex these experiences um, and life events, and the different and how it affects them at their different stages of their development. When children are distressed by major events, such as um, our current COVID pandemic, it's important for parents to reassure them of their safety and to be able um, to, uh, to be available to them to work through the crisis. Some tips about how to do this are, allow your child to be upset, um, allow, allow them the space to explain maybe why they're upset and maybe something in particular that happened um, say something positive about the situation if possible. Reassure your child that their safety um, is, is of your utmost importance. Uh, don't feel like you have to solve their problem or alleviate their feelings completely, especially because there's some things that we can't change ourselves. After they've had a chance to talk, suggest some things that they might like to do to cheer themselves up. Encourage your child to use their coping skills check in on them later and see how they're feeling and give them attention once they've calmed down and as always you know if things continue please don't uh you know be shy to to reach out and seek professional uh assistance because this is uh, whatever is best for the child and for y'all for yourselves so um i skipped the last one because i'm trying to make a little bit of extra time there was two examples so i'm going to stick with this example um so this is, uh, I chose this one dealing with loss um, because of everything that we're going through right now. And so here's some things that we can go through um, 
when when we're trying to assist our children. So, and in some situations, it's not possible to prepare um, for losses in advance, you know. And so, some tips of, about how to help them would be to um, consider their your child's developmental level and their experience with the loss. Um, wherever appropriate, encourage them to express their feelings appropriately about the situation, what caused it and how it would affect them, um, such as maybe even talks about what, uh, what's going to change in the future because of it. Try to maintain routines as much as possible. Arrange uh, for another child to look after your, your child, uh, for another adult to look after your child. We don't want another child looking after them, um, especially if the loss affects your ability to take care of them and realize that it's okay to take that time for yourself. Talk about feelings and coping and shared memories. Again, be prepared to seek professional advice and support if the loss has long-term effects on you or your child. So we're going to quickly review some of the take home messages. Okay. The foundations for becoming emotionally resilient are laid in early childhood. Coping with emotions is important for their happiness, well being, and success in life. Children learn about managing their emotions from their parents. Parents can help children learn to recognize, understand, and accept feelings. Express uh, feelings in, a, <clears throat> in appropriate ways. Develop a positive outlook. Develop coping skills. Um, dealing with negative emotions and coping with stressful life events. So now uh, we're gonna open up the floor for any questions that we might have. And I was so happy to see that we were able to get through that a little bit quicker. Let me see, I'm gonna come here to the top to see what kind of questions we got. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. I had trouble finding that one. Okay. So the top question here is um, how can, um, can we help children to become resilient to bullying? How do we build them to overcome it? So one of um, the things that I would recommend, you know, is really um, talking to, to your children about, um, about self-value and self-worth. Um, encouraging them again, you know, um, if, if, uh, if you're struggling with some of those self-talks or if they're struggling to meet some of those self-talks, maybe even talking to somebody or, uh, getting them a, a part of uh, a counseling service that can assist them so that they can start, um, being confident in themselves or even I would suggest as, you know, as a mom, um, doing some things that, that they like, that they know that they're good at to build their self-esteem. Um, that's, I know uh, one of the things, um, my little brother was, was bullied a lot growing up and that's one of the things that, um, that really assisted us. But I know when I, uh, when I work in the professional field, I know it can be really difficult for, for some kids and uh, having that extra support is is really uh, is is really what uh, what a lot of them need sometimes and and so you're also breaking down that barrier of letting them know that it's okay to ask for help and to talk to people when they're feeling a certain way. And uh, there's a follow-on comment to that one. Would you say acknowledge and validate when it is happening? Yes, absolutely. You definitely want to validate their their emotions and letting them know that what they're feeling is totally okay because it is. You know. Um, and and thank them for for being courageous and and opening up to you in that way and 
for being able to express themselves and identify um, how those, how, uh, you know, all of that was making them feel. Okay. So we will go to the next one. Okay, it's uh, many of the interventions shared are tough for parents under stress to implement. Which building block is best to start with? So I would say that um, I would go with, with whichever one feels uh, best for you. You know, um, if, if you're going through a lot of stress or if you have a lot going on in your life, you know, you also don't want to uh, overburden yourself either. And so be gentle with yourself, you know. And um, remember that that everything that's uh, it's a learning process, and you don't have to we don't have to master everything in one day. And so pick and choose, uh, go through them and see which one might be uh, the best one for you to start with. You know, but at least you know that you have all these other skills there, so that you can refer to in the future when you're ready to. I hope that helps. Okay. Okay, do you feel that children need to have more outdoor experience to help with stress? Um, I would say uh, if, if that's something that your child likes and um, it's something that, that they enjoy, um, I'll do it. And I would say yes, um, but at the same token, um, if it's something that might give them discomfort or uh, something that they're not necessarily keen to, we might want to keep that in mind too. Um, I I know for me personally, it's hard to keep my son inside because he's uh, he's nine years old right now and he just wants to be outside all the time. Um, but I know uh, somebody Aisha just commented on here that um, outdoor experiences have been a focus with COVID resources, and I would agree. And I think just uh, um, it helps a lot being uh, being outdoors. We know there's like a lot of scientific research behind it. Uh, gardening too, if uh, even if it's like a little small something, but just you know getting your hand in in some dirt. Uh, there's a lot of scientific uh, research about how that really helps calm on the anxiety as well. Awesome. Okay. Okay, somebody had uh, given an example. And it said that um, their son helped put some lights um, on their car and grandma with the yard. Um, and they want to let them know that um, that sometimes that they need help and that they love uh, their child's help. And, but they are not too sure um, what they can do to help during COVID. Um, and also because they're going through uh, through a divorce themselves. And so um, I would just like to say that um, thank you for being here today. I think that uh, it's awesome that that you're here and you're taking a proactive uh, step in your child's life, uh, that you're asking these kinds of questions yourself to see how you can, as a mother um, or as a parent, uh, become you know uh, a better uh, supportive role to him during uh, this time. And so, um, I, I, another tip that um, that's not a, a, through Triple P, but that I like to use as community health worker is uh, the love languages. And I know that uh, that's a common thing through uh, through adults, but there's also uh, children's love languages. And so um, I know sometimes for me, uh, a lot of the times when I'm working with parents, that's a common trend is, you know, they're like, I don't know how to, you know, how to support my son or, or my daughter, or how to, uh, I tell them, but I feel like they don't hear me. And one of the main things is sometimes, you know, it's just learning um, their love language, you know, because we all kind of have these different ways that, that we show uh, our, our compassion and care or that we like to receive, uh, you know, love from others. And so um, I think that that's, that's a good step. And then also just opening that floor to ask them what you can do. Um, that's that's a, a, a good first step. And so uh, again, thank you so much for being here today and for uh, for being brave and asking these questions. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Okay. 
ways to help children understand their thoughts because children um, think too much. Oh, I know, think too, and their thoughts might get in the way that they feel. So um, I really like um, to think about like how how p children are are understanding their thought, but just kind of like uh, guiding them through some of the tips of, of what they might be feeling, um, letting them know that it's okay to express their thoughts no matter how silly it is, and even more so with their parents. You know, that's something that um, I try to encourage a lot. You know, as as a mother uh, myself, you know, is just letting uh, my son know that. Uh, that at home we we've created this open safe space, you know, um, and and for you know for a reason, and so that so that uh, we can all feel comfortable to express our thoughts, um, and so maybe uh, starting off by demonstrating uh, yourself, you know, and sharing your thoughts would be um, a good way uh, to to assist your child kind of work through those themselves. Okay. So this question, I'm not, it, it's asking how uh, special kids, um, I'm assuming the special needs kids can come over uh, difficult situations. That's actually not an area that, that um, I'm, that's like a strength of mine. And so I don't wanna answer it and not give like the best, um, the best answer. So I'm not gonna answer that one. Um, but I hope that maybe we can follow up. I can, I can uh, ask somebody and follow up with you. Okay. Um, so I think this is the last question. Awesome. So how do, um, how do you suggest communicating this type of information to parents? I find that they can sometimes be resistant to information feeling, um, that they know better. So this is something that, of course, it, it always happens. And so the whole purpose of Triple P um, is to encourage parents um, to, to know that you're not, uh, when these types of things come up, um, that you want to talk in a way that you're not necessarily um, telling them, but you're prompting the questions to make them think about the solution themselves. And so, um, so, because you don't want to talk negatively necessarily, right? Uh, especially because they're there, and uh, this is a sensitive subject for for any parent, right? Um, ultimately, and so we have to be um, come from a place of understanding, compassion ourselves, and and trying to um, to promote them, you know, uh, to yes, you know, like. Uh, we, they're, they're not wrong per se, but maybe there's a better way to be thinking about situations. And so really trying to watch your verbiage, um, asking some key questions to lead to those solutions. Awesome. So I think that's all my... Wait, we had one more question. One more. Up. Okay. Oh, uh, somebody works for a daycare and there's a child that always wants a hug. Is it okay to hug or not? Um, and so I, my a funny story, my mom actually uh, worked for a daycare. Uh, she, my mom actually owned a daycare uh, for years uh, over here in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, she worked for PCI for a, a really long time. And so when I was young, I started working in uh, with her and I, there was a lot of children like that. And so I'm going to go back to the love languages. There's some kids that are just so affectionate and they just love hugs, you know, and it, and so I had a lot of students like that. And I, you know, of course, like there, I, I would talk to their parents and let them know like, hi, you know, like your children or your child is awfully like, you know, loving or, or uh, as we would say it in Spanish, like they're very cariñosos, you know? And so, um, there, there are things that I think like as a teacher, you start establishing like that rapport with the parent. And then once I think from there, it kind of, uh, depending on what their reaction is, it might tell you like, okay, is this like, because this is how their, their family is or the child is because of that dynamic, or could it be that, um, you know, maybe something is, uh, inappropriate is happening at home. That's, that's leading the child to, to do certain actions.
Awesome. Okay, any other questions? Oh, yeah, somebody said COVID-19 won't allow us to hug in daycare and that you're absolutely right because right now, yeah, we're social distancing. And so thank you so much um, for the person that put that, that comment in there because yes, we're, we are not doing that right now. But okay, well then if that's all, um, thank you so much everybody for your time today. And I hope everyone uh, stays well and uh, thank you so much.